Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing the second installation of my Feroxanes in Ferozane project and today we're going to be making our Feroxane part and it is known as DPX1. Thank you so much to my Templus Dollar patrons and everybody else who's helping me out for this project because this project is expensive and hard. So the first part of this synthesis of DPX1, we have to make something called nitroacetaldehyde oxime. This compound is a bitch and a half to make, but I'll get to that later in the video. So step one, I'm going to have to make a concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. And once that's all mixed up, we're just going to pour it into the whole reaction flask. Next, we're going to weigh out nitromethane. And the weight of the nitromethane that we're going to weigh out is the exact same weight of the sodium hydroxide in the water solution. So now I just pour the nitromethane into the pressure equalizing separatory funnel. And this is when I'm going to control the reaction drippage with because I'm not doing this by hand. Now for this reaction to take place, we need the temperature between 45 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to heat it up. Once the reaction is up to temperature, I started the dripping of nitromethane slowly into the solution over a period of two hours. At the beginning, as you see here, it is a very orangish yellow color, which is a good sign. One thing I really liked about this reaction is that it produced its own heat but it didn't produce it too fast. However, I did need to cool it down, so as you can see, I uh, actually used an ice cube to cool it down by rubbing it on the outside of the flask, and it ended up working really well, so that's kind of what I did the entire time. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's actually working really well. Rubbing the uh, ice cubes on the outside of the uh, flask is cooling it down very nicely and is keeping it in the range of 45 to 50, so that's kind of nice. I ended up finding the drip rate to optimize the time because I was supposed to be doing this reaction over a period of two hours and I needed to obviously find the best drip rate so that I didn't go over or under. So I figured that one drop every three to four seconds was perfect. Now that the reaction's finished and all the nitromethane is added, I'm going to let it stir at 45 to 50 Celsius for around 20 minutes. This ensures that a reaction is driven to completion and then once this is done, we can move on to the neutralization step. Now that the time is up, we're going to have to cool it down to under 5 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to throw it in an ice bath. While this is cooling, I'm just going to throw in 85 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. This is the concentrated stuff that you buy at the store. I did pre-chill the hydrochloric acid because this reaction is going to be very exothermic, but it didn't really matter in the end and it still took forever. Um, the solution actually refused to stir, so I had to dump it all out and put it into a beaker and replace it with a big stir bar that I had. After that, it ended up working, but it was very annoying to transfer all the fluid. Another thing that really irked me about this reaction was that it was a very slow process because adding the hydrochloric acid produced a lot of heat and the heat really didn't dissipate very quickly. So it was just a painful process and it took over an hour to add all the hydrochloric acid, but eventually I got to this halfway point where suddenly a bunch of yellow stuff just precipitate it out, and at that point, I could actually add the hydrochloric acid very quickly because the heating wasn't really happening anymore. Here is the solution after all the hydrochloric acid is added, and as you can see, it is very yellow, but that is actually exactly what we want. So now comes the part where I actually wanted to blow my brains out because the stupid stuff refused to filter. It clogged up the filter every two seconds, and even with the full vacuum pulling on it, it barely went through. The people in the paper were like, oh, you know, just dry it on the vacuum pump and then dry it for 10 minutes under high vacuum and then add a bunch of calcium chloride and it all dissolves. Well, no, that's not what happened. Instead, it didn't dry at all. And as you can see, it is it just refused to even be miscible with the diethyl ether because diethyl ether, of course, doesn't like water. So it just it was a total shit show. In the end, I just end up using a 12-volt uh, vacuum pump, and I use that to directly pull the ether off, and I even set up a little apparatus to try to catch the diethyl ether, but it doesn't work very well. But at least it, you know, half works, and I do get some of the diethyl ether back. So naturally, the 12-volt vacuum pump didn't work enough to get rid of all the ether. It got rid of most of it, which was good, but I needed to quickly get rid of the rest. So what I did was use my actual vacuum pump, my actual vacuum pump is a trooper. I'm very proud that it survived. But it sucked away the rest of the ether, 
and once it was all sucked up, I got some actual nice crystals of the nitroacetaldehyde oxime. And as you can see, they're more red slash orange than the uh, supposed yellow, but it, um, it ends up working. So to prove that I actually do have my product, I'm gonna do a burn test. The first test that you just saw is the crude stuff and the second is the pure stuff. Now that I have my pure nitro acetaldehyde oxime, I'm going to make the DPX1. For DPX1, I'm going to need sulfuric acid, the oleum that I made in the last video, and the nitro acetaldehyde oxime. Now according to the paper, and from what I noticed, the nitro acetaldehyde oxime actually decomposes at room temperature fairly quickly, so I needed to react this right away. The only way to really store it is to store it at like negative 80 celsius, which obviously I can't do. So I had to use all of it right away. So what I did was I split it into three portions, just like the paper said, and I first added the first third into the uh, sulfuric acid. And then after that was added, I added oleum. And then after the oleum was added, I added the second third, then I added more oleum, and then I added the third third. So that was the entire DPX1 reaction, and it only took around half an hour. The only goal was to keep it under 10 degrees Celsius. Once the additions of oleum are done, you're supposed to let it sit for 10 minutes stirring at the 10 degrees Celsius temperature, and then that's what I did. And one thing that I noticed while I was stirring was that all the nitroacetaldehyde oxime actually absorbed the water from the air and became a solution, which uh, shows how hydroscopic it is. Now though, we're going to take the solution out of the ice bath and let it stir for an hour as it naturally warms up to room temperature. Now is the most dangerous part, and that is quenching the solution in water, but obviously most of this is oleum, so we're going to be using only ice. So I weighed out 50 grams of ice for the scale that I was doing it at, and as you can see, as the oleum solution went in there, it heated up a lot. Look how fast it melted the ice. And uh, we're supposed to have a white precipitate, but as you can see, it's still reddish. But, as I keep on stirring, you can actually see a white precipitate, or a precipitate form, that is in a much lighter color than the red before. Okay, yeah, this is actually perfect. Um, it's so cold in here that there's literally water droplets freezing. So that's good. That means that this was plenty cold enough to sequester the heat when additions. I even wore a face shield because I was so scared. But, uh, yeah. Cool, so now I'm gonna leave it in the refrigerator for 12 hours, and then I'll come back to it, and then I'll filter, and I'll have my product. So here is our final product of DPX1, and we ended up getting around 1.6 grams when it was completely dry, and that was a very low yield. Let's do a burn test, because this in itself is actually a little more powerful than ETN. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Um, my next videos, I can't really tell you when they'll come out because it all depends on when I get precursors, which are taking a very long time to come in. So I guess uh, you'll probably have to wait quite some time.